Welcome to Valente Brothers TV, directly from our headquarters in North Miami Beach. We're happy to be with you again, a segment that uh, we used to have in our channel, and we want to bring it back, a request that we had from many of our students and friends all over the world, asking us to share a little bit of the history of Jiu-Jitsu. For us, it's so important. Uh, my brother Pedro is a great expert on the um, history of jiu-jitsu, of course, we've been studying it for many years. My father also uh, really liked to study. Today, we have a lot more access to information. I think that really has changed a lot for us, for a lot of our colleagues in Brazil, in Japan, a lot of historians uh, studying uh, jiu-jitsu. It's very important to understand where we come from. The roots. The roots. So. This is gonna be the first of a few episodes, short episodes dedicated to the history of Jiu Jitsu. I hope you enjoy. Uh, in this video today, we're gonna to talk about um, a few topics. We're gonna to start with uh, the, prehistory. the prehistory of Jiu Jitsu. We're also going to talk about a theory which is connected with the prehistory that our father developed in great part something that he really liked to, to discuss. We're gonna talk about the influence of the samurai warrior in our art. And we're also going to talk about how the name, the etymology of Jiu Jitsu is also extremely valuable. Understanding that is very helpful uh, for all of us. So where should we start, Pedro? I think we should start with our father's theory about the instinctive nature of jiu-jitsu, the instinctive na nature of fighting, of grappling. Um, if you look at the animals, wild animals, you will notice that, they, that all of them have a particular fighting system unique to their species. Every giraffe will use their long, the long neck as a mechanism of fighting, almost like a slap. It's very interesting to, to look at how you Actually, our father really liked to, to, to study, the at the time, the Discovery Channel. Correct. They had those shows showing the animals, the predators attacking the prey. And what you're saying is that animals have very characteristic movements. Correct. Look at kangaroos, yeah. how they punch and kick. Look at bears. Many times they grapple, even using the guard. Horses, the lions. Horses, how they kick lions. Cats. Tigers. Cats, they don't turn their backs. When we look at gorillas, it's unbelievable the, the similarity with jiu-jitsu, with the grappling aspect of jiu-jitsu. So in that sense, we can, we can notice that it is very difficult to pinpoint how jiu-jitsu was created, how jiu-jitsu was developed. Many people want to say, oh, jiu-jitsu was invented here, it was invented there. If you're talking about jiu-jitsu techniques, then they come up with human beings. As human beings developed, go back to cavemen, and for sure they were already fighting in rational ways, combining the intelligence, the brain, with the necessity to defend, the necessity to fight. We separated an uh, excerpt from a famous quote by a great jiu-jitsu master, Sensei Koizumi, Goji Gunji Koizumi, from the Kodokan. And as to the origin and of jiu-jitsu, there are several opinions, which continue until today. No? Yes. But they're found to be mere assumptions based on narratives relating the founding of certain schools or some incidental records or illustrations found in the ancient manuscripts, not only in Japan, but in China, Persia, Germany, and Egypt. And I'll stop here for now. There's also a lot of talk about India, especially when we were growing up and today the historians really dislike uh, this. Why is that, Pedro? Well, because if you go back to the history of Wushu, of Kung Fu, of some of the Chinese martial arts, it is very connected with the history of Buddhism. And Buddhism starts with in the north of India, mm -hmm. where the Buddha um, lived. 
in the north of India. And so that culture was or migrated from the north of India to China. And within that culture, it appears that there were some martial principles and some fighting techniques. And if you study the history of Jiu-Jitsu in Japan, many people really believe in a strong Chinese influence, not only philosophically, but also technically. And so then people like to make that connection. Well, if Jiu-Jitsu, the Japanese style of Jiu-Jitsu was influenced by China, so it comes from China, and the Chinese martial arts were influenced by India, so it comes from India. So since India is the, the birthplace of Buddhism, then somehow it must be the birthplace of Jiu-Jitsu. Um, this theory really became very popular in Brazil in the 1960s. Obviously, you already have the Indian connection when it comes to Chinese martial arts, but not Jiu-Jitsu. The, the connection between Jiu-Jitsu and, and, and Indian martial arts was made in the 1960s in Brazil. And it was, it was an assumption. As long as we know. An assumption. Yet to be um, backed by concrete evidence. Yes, and some historians attribute that to some um, disputes that were happening in the 60s between the Gracie family and the Japanese authorities who were pushing judo. And so maybe for that reason, there was a necessity to disconnect jiu-jitsu from Japan a little bit. That's just a theory that some historians like to, to promote. But, um, but we, for one reason or another, um, when the Federation booklets were printed in Brazil. The Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu Federation, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation booklets were printed. They attributed the origin of Jiu-Jitsu to India, but we cannot find any concrete evidence of that direct connection, other than an indirect influence, not only because of the Chinese connection, but also because, as we said, um, similar arts were practiced around the world because they are very connected to the human instinct. Correct, and that's very important. And as our father liked to say that, we found something very similar in Sensei Koizumi, a Kodokan representative who was instrumental in the development. Shared a very similar thought. So, but let's go back then to the pre. What are some of the most important um, um, elements that we can now share with our friends in regards to that period of jujitsu? when we talk about the prehistory of jiu-jitsu is what we just said, the understanding that similar styles of fighting were practiced around the world because in primitive societies where fighting was a necessity and human beings connected their intelligence with the necessity of fighting and used techniques that are very similar to what we practice today. In our museum, we have the Egyptian walls, the pictures of that, and we see many techniques wrestling techniques. Ancient tomb in Egypt where you have um, sophisticated fighting techniques um, already being practiced 5,000 years ago. And in Europe, the German and Dutch Correct. books that we have found. From the Middle Ages, but even before that, you go to, the, to Mesopotamia, we have a, cop, a picture of a copper stand in our museum of two uh, men engaged in grappling. There's a dispute the right now among historians um, to find whether the roots come from Europe or Africa even. Well, it comes from every, I believe that, as I said, similar styles were being practiced in different places, similar concepts, because these techniques are instinctive. It goes back to either our it fathers. Works or it, doesn't. it goes back to our fathers. Yeah. So it's very difficult to do all of this in such a short time, but we want to keep this video short, these videos short. So we're going to continue in the next episode talking about the uh, etymology of jiu-jitsu and of course the samurai influence, uh, the amazing influence in our art. Thank you very much and we'll see you soon.